thank you for having me today. My name is Sarah Patchouli, and I am a heart failure nurse practitioner at VCU Health, where I am part of the cardiac amyloidosis care team. Today, we're talking about clinical signs that should trigger us to think about transthyretin amyloidosis. This is part two of a two-part presentation, and we'll be reviewing non-cardiac clues. Transthyretin or TTR amyloidosis involves a protein that everyone has in their body. This protein is made by the liver and in its stable form, it transports vitamin A and thyroxine throughout the body. This protein can become unstable for two different reasons, either from aging or from having a hereditary mutation. When the protein becomes unstable, it falls apart and tries to put itself back together, but when it does so, it folds up incorrectly, thereby forming amyloid fibrils. These fibrils deposit in various places throughout the body, disrupting organ structure and function. So like we reviewed on the previous slide, the catalyst for destabilizing the TTR protein can either be aging or having a hereditary mutation. There are more than 140 possible TTR mutations that can lead to varying degrees of cardiomyopathies or neuropathies. The age of onset of symptoms and the degree of cardiac versus neuro involvement depend on which genetic mutation is at play. And there are several red flags that should trigger us to consider TTR amyloidosis in our list of differential diagnoses. As Dr. Shaw reviewed in part one of this presentation, we should be thinking about TTR amyloidosis in heart failure patients whose symptoms worsen despite our regular clinical interventions or in heart failure patients who are intolerant of traditional guideline directed medical therapy. There are also several non-cardiac clues that should trigger us to think of this disease, such as a history of bilateral carpal tunnel disease, trigger finger, spinal stenosis, non-traumatic tendon rupture, and unexplained polyneuropathy. There is also a curious association of TTR amyloidosis and large joint arthritis. And we find that many of our patients with TTR amyloidosis have a history of large joint replacement. So large joints uh, being shoulder, hip, or knee. These patients will likely follow with multiple different specialists. They often will follow with cardiology for their heart failure and conduction disease. They will often see ortho for their history of carpal tunnel syndrome, trigger finger, or large joint arthritis. And they may see neurology for the burning and tingling in their hands and feet or for symptoms of dysautonomia, such as orthostasis, alternating constipation and diarrhea, and erectile dysfunction. Carpal tunnel syndrome is common in patients with TTR amyloidosis, and it usually shows up several years before patients actually develop heart disease. In, one, in two separate studies, one in the US and one in Germany, they found that TTR amyloid was detected in 10% of samples that were taken from patients at the time of their carpal tunnel release surgery. So as we, as we mentioned, um, with TTR amyloidosis, carpal tunnel syndrome shows up before patients actually develop cardiac involvement. In one uh, Italian study, they saw that patients developed carpal tunnel syndrome on average five to nine years before developing cardiac disease. Now in practice, we see that some patients have carpal tunnel syndrome dating back 20 years before they actually are diagnosed with any um, cardiac involvement. Just like carpal tunnel disease, spinal stenosis is common in patients with TTR amyloidosis. Spinal stenosis occurs when the ligaments around the spinal cord thicken. We think that 
amyloid deposition in this tissue is the, is the culprit of the thickening in patients with TTR amyloidosis. One study looked at 250 patients ages 50 and up without cardiac disease who were undergoing surgery for lumbar spinal stenosis. They saw that nearly 40% of these patients had TTR amyloid deposition in the ligament. Another place that TTR amyloid likes to go is the tissue surrounding the brachial biceps. This can cause a non-traumatic bicep tendon rupture. Pictured here are two of our patients, and when they contract their arms, you can see what we call the Popeye sign. And this is actually um, a ruptured bicep tendon that is curled up in the arm. And we can tell it's not a bicep muscle because these patients otherwise have evidence of muscle wasting. TTR amyloid polyneuropathy can be devastating for many patients. The severity of symptoms and the age of onset is variable depending on which type of TTR amyloidosis the patient has. When it, TTR amyloid polyneuropathy can affect different types of nerves and depending on which types of nerves are affected, patients may have uh, different symptoms. When the small fiber nerves are affected, patients may report pain or increased sensitivity to touch. They may note burning and tingling, pins and needles, or electric shock sensations. When the autonomic nerves are affected, patients may have orthostatic hypotension. They may have problems with urinary retention, alternating diarrhea and constipation, and erectile dysfunction. Large fiber nerve dysfunction can lead to numbness and loss of balance. And finally, the uh, motor nerve dysfunction can cause muscle wasting and weakness. So in closing, I hope that you all remember these like, red flags and, and consider TTR amyloidosis um, when seeing patients. Historically, the diagnosis of TTR amyloidosis is delayed and patients often see five or more providers before they're accurately diagnosed. So my hope is that we can do better as healthcare providers in the future for our future patients.